an A pit is no joke. Armor piercing incendiary tracer. So after a video I did a while back, which was 50 cal A-pit rounds versus steel plates, I had a ton of requests from fans and viewers to do it yet again, but to attempt it inside a ballistics gel. After a little bit of brainstorming, I found a way of suspending a steel plate inside a ballistics gel while it cooled. It worked out quite well, now let's see what happens. Okay, so A-pit round, ballistics gel with the steel is down at about 100 yards. I'm not sure if the trace is going to go, uh, we'll see, but I definitely know the armor piercing incendiary is going to work. Alright, let's take a peek. Round in, glasses on. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, killed the table and tossed that big block of gel that I took so much time cleaning up to look good on high speed. Ugh. <laughs> uh, looks like the table fared okay, but the ballistics gel, ugh, look at this. So steel's on the backside still, it's plastered, but it split the gel completely in half. It's fused and melted to the plate. That's that incendiary part of it. Nice little hole right there. This is the other half mixed with cow pies lovely being on the back side of a steel plate or any type of armor with a a pit round going through it you're going to be hurting for certain what do you have in your bathtub probably not that <laughs> do not want to be on the receiving end of an a pit round it's terrifying i mean I got big hands too, so good God. Look at that impact. That is nuts. Backside hole right about there. All right, so I gotta clean this block up and it'll look nice and pretty for you guys in the video for the next shot. So keep it in mind, uh, all past videos, all future videos, all the ballistics gel blocks you've seen I personally do this myself. I take them apart, clean them, make sure to scavenge as much clean ballistic gel as I can so I can remelt it and use it in other blocks or other videos. The gel is not cheap to begin with, uh, so I try to save as much money as possible with cleaning it up and fixing it and making sure it is cooked at the right temperature and molded the right way. So when I'm shooting the gel, it's at the right viscosity, it's at the right temperature. All those tests are very difficult to put together, even though they look like it's just like, oh, I put up a couple blocks and shot at them. I'm melting these blocks myself. This guy's a little bit harder to clean up though. This is gonna be fun. When you see ballistics gel, it is not what people say it is. You can't just push your thumb into it. This stuff is thick. For instance, a knife, shove it real hard. Ballistics gel is not meant to be an exact representation of flesh or tissue. It's meant to be a standard product to be used. That way all tests are gonna be equal. So if I see a certain amount of penetration in gel with a 50 cal compared to a 223, I can compare those because the control is consistent, which is the gel. Vastly different. There's no open cavities, there's no organs inside this, there's nothing that's going to be representing a body or a target in this situation. So you've got to figure out with this density of gel, I mean that doesn't even poke into it yet, it's just barely scratching the surface. With this density of gel, and you're seeing this type of trauma, Imagine on softer tissue targets. All right, so we're back. Had to remold the ballistics gel, clean it up, set up all the cameras, bring it all back out here. Get all the cable ran out again for the second shot. I thought this video was gonna be short and sweet. One shot, get it done. But that first high speed shot, even though it's incredible, I had it set for dark, expecting there to be a bigger flash. Didn't need that dark of setting on my high-speed camera, and the high-speed was pretty grainy, so I'm a stickler for quality, so I figured take the time, spend three or four days remolding that ballistics gel block, making sure it's good to go. 
I put a smaller steel target inside of it. That way, when the round impacts, rather than all the fragmentation just instantly splitting that block in half, it'll give more ballistics gel around the expanding gases, and it should have this better bubbling effect. But my guess is it's still gonna rip and it might tear in half again. Eight bit rounds versus steel inside a ballistics gel, shot two. This is gonna be interesting. Here we go. Now you see why I'm so nervous half the time with these shots because once you, you know, blow up Humpty Dumpty, you can't put them back together again unless you take them home, clean them, remold them. <laughs> and that's why I'm always a little bit on edge. Let's see what happens. Whoa. What happened to, the, oh, that's so weird. It impacted the steel, exploded, and shoved it back into the ballistic shell block. When I first walked up, I thought everything on the backside was just permanent wound cavity and fragmentation, and I thought the plate was still there, but no. <laughs> what the hell? The plate was shoved back, so when the ballistic shell opened up, the force had enough power to shove that steel plate into that open cavity, that temporary open cavity, and then it collapsed down on itself. What the hell? And because the steel plate was closer to this part of the gel, the top surface to the, well, my right, all the expanding gases just exploded out of the high speed, as you can see, and the trauma is what you see right now in the gel. That is too cool. The first one was amazing, don't get me wrong, very unique. Had a bigger surface area of that steel plate, so less likely to get pushed back into the gel, so it stayed where it needed to be. The fragmentation kind of buzzsawed the ballistics gel, and it just came apart in half, and there was very little gel around the edges of that steel plate. But with this one, though, it's about a five inch plate, uh, five or six inch plate, it allowed for expanding fragmentation to stay inside the gel block, and didn't separate it, but it did penetrate. Obviously, there's gonna be a point of least resistance and the open section that was the closest part uh, to the surface of the ballistics gel, when it did crack open, all the gases went out that direction. But all the fragmentation, you can see metal just fragmenting off when it hit the steel plate, going backwards in a 360 degree pattern. Wow. Pieces ranging from the size of small birdshot up to double up buck and fragmentation, but jagged and rigid. If you had a plate in front of you or you were behind heavy cover and heavy armor and somebody hits you with an A pit round or at you in an A pit round, I'm guessing this fragmentation would sprawl out like a shotgun pattern behind it and be potentially lethal up to a few feet. That is nuts. Not to mention the scare factor. I mean, you would soil your drawers instantly if one of these rounds came flying through a armored vehicle. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a little behind the scenes look at how much work goes into making these ballistics gel blocks. I mean, these ones this size take a lot. Uh, the smaller blocks take a lot of time as well because I had to line them up. As you can tell, this block is very rough. There's a lot of bubbles in it, a lot of imperfections, but I rushed it through to make sure this video was done right and we had a good clean shot with better high speed for you guys. In my ballistic shell videos, you can see that all the blocks or most of the blocks have little to none uh, when it comes to bubbles and imperfections because I want that test to look as clean as possible for you. Hope you appreciate it. Thank you so much to our patrons at patreon.com forward slash GY6. Your support each month and a little bit of donations here and there goes a long way. The gel's not cheap, setup's not cheap. There's a lot of time put into all this. I uh, hope you appreciate it, hope you enjoyed. Much more to come, endless possibilities of videos. Let me know in the comment section what ideas you may have and I'll try to make it a reality. Damn, stay away from the A-Pit 50 cal rounds. This is Andrew Bocher with GY6 Vids. I'll see you guys next time, later.